Buckle up, friends, and welcome to the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. I'm your host, Deb, otherwise known as Mocktail Mom, a retired wine drinker that finally got sick and tired of spinning on life's broken record called Detox to Retox. Let this podcast be an encouragement to you if alcohol is maybe a form of self-care for you, where you find yourself dragging through the day waiting to pour another glass. I am excited to share with you the fun of discovering new things to drink when you aren't drinking and the joy of waking up each day without a hangover. It is an honor to serve as your sober fun guide. So sit back and relax or keep doing whatever it is you're doing. This show is produced for you with love from the great state of Kentucky. Thanks so much for being here and big time cheers. Okay, welcome back to Thriving Alcohol Free. You guys, I am... I'm a little bit out of my mind right now because I have Rob from Generation NA, non-alcoholic bottle shop up in Lafayette, Indiana, is joining us today. I am so excited. First of all, Rob, I absolutely am so grateful for your encouragement. You and I are friends on Instagram. I've been to your shop in Lafayette. Your shop is beautiful. And I wanted to have you on the podcast because you just celebrated. I think when we're recording this, I think it was two days ago, you had 1,000 days of being alcohol-free. That's correct. Yeah. Comma club. (laughs) The comma club. So you and I are both in the comma club. So I want to talk to you. I wanted to have you on today because you do not have a background in running a non-alcohol bottle shop. I want to hear your story about becoming alcohol free. I want you to share your story about opening up a non-alcohol bottle shop, which as we're filming this right now, I can see the shop right behind you. Your shop is so beautiful. Your shop is like the gold standard of how all non-alcohol bottle shops should look. It's so beautiful. So, okay, Rob, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being on today. Thank you, Deb, so much. I appreciate the kind words. <laughs> oh, I mean it. I totally mean it. Okay, so a thousand and two days ago, so I don't know when this podcast is going to come out exactly, but so it'll be a thousand and thirty days or so. Okay, so you woke up and you were like, "I'm going to stop drinking," or did you just want to moderate, or where kind of were you in your alcohol-free journey? So uh, I was a moderate drinker. COVID happened. I owned a tech business. I became a pretty heavy drinker. So the first year or so of COVID. Uh, I drank pretty heavily, and I actually tried to do a dry January in January of 2021. I failed at it. I did do about two weeks, right? So went back to drinking, tried a dry February, (laughs) which I kind of made up. I was like, let's try this again. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another two or three weeks, and went back to drinking. Then March 10th came around, and I woke up, and I didn't want to drink anymore, and I haven't had a drink since. And I realized that it was difficult for me to moderate. I really enjoy drinking, <laughs> so like a lot of people do. I have a lot of stress in my tech job and just wanted to feel better. Uh, physically, I was having a few problems. My blood pressure was elevated. You know, I was having like some stomach pains, just different things. I just didn't feel well. I was, you know, waking up a lot at night. I had a fast heart rate. Mental health wise, my anxiety was out of control. There were days that. I couldn't leave the house. I I remember one day in particular, and this day still haunts me. It was probably in that January or February of that year. And I'd gone back to drinking and I was just trying to sit in the driveway and drive my daughter to school that day, just a couple blocks. I I couldn't do it. My anxiety just would not let me do it. I had to have my wife take her to school. And I thought, you know what? This isn't a good life for anybody, right? I mean, what am I trading for feeling slightly relaxed for 10 minutes. I'm trading my life here. You know, it became became a pattern that I wanted to improve upon. I really wanted to take an initiative to get back to the person that I knew I could be both physically and, and mentally. And um, so I am over a thousand days now. And uh, last time I had my labs run, my blood pressure is now perfect. My mental health, uh, I mean, doing things like this. I, I, I do a lot of like in-person speaking events. Uh, I was made president of my local business to business networking group with other CEOs. Really? Uh, I get up every week and chat in front of like 40 business professionals. And uh, I mean, I don't want to say my anxiety completely went away, but it, it quit cutting the booze. If it was just one thing that's improved, that alone would be worth it. And there's all these other side effects are great, great improvements that you get when you cut out too. So like, your sleep, your skin, your appetite, your energy. I mean, your your numbers, like blood pressure and things like that. I found that I get a lot more enjoyment out of life, right? Like even doing little things like hanging out with your kids or going to a movie or eating a sandwich, like you get like more enjoyment out of them. And it's not just because you're not hungover, it's because you're not giving your brain 
these cheap dopamine hits, right? And you're not like artificially like bumping that up. So I found that I am just a lot happier in life, alcohol free. I don't have any plans on going back. Now, when I when I quit, I I didn't say that I was never going to drink again. I didn't label myself an alcoholic. I didn't I didn't do any of that. I didn't go to AA or anything like that. But you know, I I just I knew I didn't want to drink that day. And every day I wake up and I just don't want to drink for that one day. And I just take it one day at a time. Same exact same. And I will say, I mean, you're young. You have young kids, and so yeah, just to. I mean, I was doing, I was the same, like trading my life. Like what was I trading my life for? And all the anxiety that I had from, you know, from drinking. And I was, you know, I was not feeling the best on Sundays and I'd hang out at home or on the couch. I wasn't out. So now, you know, I'm hanging out with my kids. I taught my daughter how to ride her bike the first summer I got alcohol free. Uh, I hang out with my son. We go geocaching. Like we're out and they grew up so quick. So my kids are 10 and 13 now. So, you know, it was, you know, about three years ago and they were at a good age where they would have start probably noticed that I wasn't spending as much time, but, but I didn't want to regret it too. They're going to be going away. They're not going to be living here forever. And I don't want to ever look back and say, I should have spent more time with my kids because I'll never get that time back. Right. You I don't want to so ever right. regret it. And I know so now right. I can be the best father that I can be the best husband that I can be and the best business owner too. I own a few companies and Tell you what, you're not a good business owner when you're when you're hungover. So I mean, <laughs> you're not really wanting to go out and do a bunch of stuff. So I wasn't I was doing a disservice to myself, my employees, my customers, my family. So I just needed to change one small thing. And that has really I feel like I've leveled up. Like I feel alcohol yeah. free is next level living. And before I became sober, I just kind of thought people said that because maybe they wanted to pretend that that was it, or maybe they didn't want you to feel sorry for them or whatever it was, but it's true. Like it it really is true. And the longer that you're sober every day, or maybe not every day at this point, but every week or every month that goes by, I continually notice new benefits from it. And it's great. I mean, think back to some of your favorite memories, right? A lot of them are probably when you were a kid or in high school, or a lot of them, even as adults, you probably weren't drunk. So think about that. What are we looking to get out of life? We're looking to get good memories and good moments and connection. You know, the drink shop that we have here, Generation NA, is is really all about that. And we offer a lot of functional drinks as well. So if somebody is looking for relaxation or balance or focus or energy, we can still give them that. But the benefit is, you know, with alcohol, you kind of numb the good and the bad. So you're just kind of like just numbing everything. Where with a functional beverage or with sobriety, you can really enjoy the good. Right. And, and you yeah. can really just get the most out of that moment. Um, I found in particular that going to a sporting event and just absorbing that energy from the event promotes a lot of dopamine and endorphins and feel good. You know, where before I had to be drinking to even go out in public because of social anxiety and stuff. Right. Like that. And, right. And I didn't really remember the event or the show or the concert or whatever I was at. And it's kind of sad, you know, honestly, that I missed out on that. And then there's a lot of people that don't realize there are these experiences in life that you can have alcohol free. And they're so much better. It's so true. And you said, it's so interesting. Like you said, like, it's just that one small, I think you said small thing, you know, that you removed, right. But like before, like when you were drinking, did it feel small? in your life? Like did drinking feel small, like a small decision or did it feel like a huge decision, like to try to give this up? It was a big, my, my life revolved around alcohol. I mean, social events, that was the first thing I was at the bar. There was always an excuse. You have a good day, you drink, you have a bad day, you drink. It's Tuesday, drink. It's the weekend. drink. drink. So yeah, Yeah. I mean, I guess I should have said it was like one thing. Like, well, Well, yeah, I don't mean that, but I, but I agree with you though. Now, like being on the other side of it, now being alcohol free, it is. I look at it and I go, it was one tiny little thing and I was allowing it to be this big thing in my life, you know? Yeah. Early sobriety is challenging. Uh, the first couple weekends specifically, I remember feeling that really kind of sad for myself and that I was missing out. I, I, I wasn't going out with friends. I was at home. It was hard. It got a lot easier. Like, I mean, I don't even think about alcohol now, whether it's a Saturday night or anything. And it just, it just takes time and it does get easier. I saw a graphic once and it kind of showed a person's brain and it showed different colors. And there was a, like a, a red, yellow, and blue. And the red was really big. And then it was supposedly like, this is the way your brain feels about alcohol over time. And then it basically just shrunk that section of the brain. And that allowed more room for other things, right? So you're allowing more good to come in 
or really just more of anything, really, honestly, totally. because you're not focused on alcohol. I mean, it does take up a lot of brain power and space. I mean, what time is it now? So 4.41 when we're filming this, I would have totally been thinking, oh, it's almost five o'clock. I'm going to start, you know, start drinking. What are we going to have for dinner? Which we'll pair well with some wine. It's almost kind of um, exhausting <laughs> to think about doing all of that. And then you have to maintain that, of course, because everyone's kind of chasing that the first drink, the first buzz. And that's what everybody wants, right? But after you've had one, you've got to have two to get back to one. And then you've got to get three and then four. And you have to keep drinking to feel how you did at the beginning. And then you just feel like crap. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. No, it's true. And it takes up, it does take up so much time. So now like not drinking, I mean, like I have so much time. That's why I started doing stuff on Instagram. Cause it was like, I had all this time in the evening. I wasn't, you know, zoned out. I wasn't thinking about drinking. It was like, okay, what am I going to do with myself? You know? So yeah. So you're a, a true entrepreneur with many businesses. So you were like, why not start another one? <laughs> well, I got into all my high school hobbies. Let's say I started playing basketball. I got back, uh, I set up a bunch of fish tanks. I got my bass guitar back out. I used to play in bands. I totally did all that. So I love it. I love it. I love it. You're like, I got into my old high school hobbies. That's so perfect. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, yes. that's kind of who you go back to because I went away to college. I went out of state to Purdue at 18. My first beer was on my 18th birthday at a fraternity. And, wow. uh, you know, so it was kind of just the culture from 18 on was around drinking every weekend. And so you really kind of lost your identity with your hobbies and, and your free time because your free time is all about, well, we're going to the bars and we're going to meet up, yeah. you know, with, with friends or, or whoever. And, it really does take a lot of time. And I don't think you realize that until you're sober. But the benefit of that is the weekends are a lot longer, right? I mean, you're not hung over and you have all this free time. So it's a lot of fun. You know, you, you have a lot of free time for hobbies, of course, too, or start new have, businesses. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of fun and you get to go back, I think, to like who you were before drinking became a part of your memories, like you were saying, you know. It's who you really are. Yeah. You it's get who to, you really you are. Who you are. And I think it just kind of comes back, right? Like you, your your yeah. brain returns to to who you really are as a person, and and it's not dependent on this highly addictive substance. You know, that's kind of totally. driving some of those decisions in your life. Totally, totally. Okay, as you guys know, I love Geese and Zero Percent Wines. Their Sauvignon Blanc is my go-to on a regular basis, but they recently launched a delicious Sparkling Brut Zero Percent, which is quickly becoming a fan favorite. I am so proud to have Geeson as the exclusive non-alcoholic wine sponsor of the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. Geese and Zero Percent Wines are created through the magic of advanced spinning cone technology to remove the alcohol from their full leaded wines. The award-winning winemaker Duncan Schuler and his team have done wonders in Marlboro, New Zealand by creating an entire family of 0% wines with all the flavor and deliciousness you expect from traditional, quote, full-leaded wine. Their non-alcoholic wines maintain the aroma and the body to create a low-calorie wine that never contains more than 0.5 ABV. Globally available, look for Geese and 0% wines wherever you shop for your non-alcoholic options. Their family of alcohol-free wines include the most effervescent member of the family, the Sparkling Brut 0%, which is absolutely delicious for any celebration. My personal favorite, although I do love them all, is the Sauvignon Blanc coming in at only 100 calories for the entire bottle. And not to be missed, the other members of their 0% family, the Riesling, the Premium Red Blend, the Rosé, the Pinot Gris. With Geese and 0% wines, there's a de-alcoholized wine for everyone and every occasion. Give Geeson a try and let me know how much you love it. And if you want to meet their winemaker, go back to episode 33 of the podcast where Duncan Schuler joined me to share about the Geeson story. Okay, so you're back to your old self. You have all this time now. So you're like, let me open up a non-alcoholic bottle shop. And I know we talked about this for the Mocktail Summit. So if anybody hasn't registered for the Mocktail Summit, please do so. But Rob is uh, one of the guests on the Mocktail Summit to talk about specifically opening up a non-alcoholic bottle shop. So do you want to share with everybody how you got into the non-alcoholic bottle shop space and um, how this has become such a passion of yours? Absolutely. So early on in sobriety, my wife bought me a six pack of athletic brewing and I tried it. I liked it. I got into non-alcoholic beers, started an Instagram channel. Uh, it was first branded na.beer and I just rated and reviewed beers and I noticed we were getting a lot of engagement and that was great. And so I thought, okay, maybe there's more people like like that out here, right? So I thought it'd be kind of cool to open a shop. And I had a tech space at the time that during COVID, we had a lot of available space. We actually even had a bar area upstairs. So I bought about 10 cases of beer, a couple of the ritual spirits and some Shirley wines. And that was it. I was like, I, I don't know. I don't know if people are going to come. I don't know if people are going to buy it. 
it was in like the third floor of an office building and there was no signage. So, so I made an Instagram and a Facebook post and opened the doors and we had like 30, 35 people the day one that came in. And I was like, oh my gosh, dude, like you guys like this stuff. And they're like, yes, buy more. So we've just expanded every week. And then so last summer we were doing it as a pop-up. I, I wanted to start off small. I, I didn't spend any money starting off like maybe 500 bucks, cheap shelves wow. and some products. And then every week we would just invest back into the shop. So we'd buy a cooler, we'd buy a tap system, buy more inventory, whatever it is. About a year ago, so October 1st, we got our retail spot that is behind us now. And it's a thousand square feet on Main Street in Lafayette, Indiana. And uh, it's been great. I just work virtually for my other company. So I sit at the bar and I do like my nine to five. And then when people come in, I get out of my desk and help them out around the store. So one of my initiatives was to like not sit at a desk as much too, because that's, that's not healthy, right? I mean, yeah, 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 we're a health yeah. and wellness. And so I've done that for 20 years. So I thought, well, this is a good opportunity for me to still do my day job because tech businesses are virtual now. Um, I'm getting up, I'm getting my steps, I'm, I'm helping out the community with it, but it's been great. We, we made our shop more of a, like a liquor store, a tap room, just without the alcohol. So people that are missing drinking can come in and get the full experience. I mean, you could do draft beer, you could do shots, you could do beer pong on Main Street sometimes. That's we do so cool. live music. So anything that We've even done like beer bongs, like anything that you can find at like a bar, like we want to give people that experience, but without the alcohol, because that's a big part of it. When you stop drinking, like you miss going to these places. Some people don't feel comfortable going to a bar, but they want a place they can socialize. We have a lounge. People can come in. They can sit at the bar. They can sit at the lounge, do some work, have a non-alcoholic draft beer, whatever they want. We do frozen adaptogenic slushies in the summer. So it's we so do a cool. different recipe every week. People can vote on and we just want to make it fun. You know, and we want people that walk by to want to come in and check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So for anybody maybe who's listening, who's maybe, you know, maybe they're just doing dry January. They're thinking about doing dry January. They're trying to do dry January. You know, what advice maybe would you give for them as they're thinking, you know, like, you know, what am I going to drink when I'm not drinking? (laughs) Well, we try to make it easy. So I, I started off with the dry January and like I said, it didn't work out so well, but I eventually figured that out. The contrast of going back to drinking is actually what helped me decide that I wanted to stay sober. But drink wise, there's a lot. I mean, some of the craft beers we have have won medals over like the leaded counterparts. So like against like beers with like eight times the amount of ABV. So if you like craft beers, draft beers, any style under the sun, we have them. We do obviously a lot of ready to drink, zero proof cocktails, mocktails. We do drinks with adaptogens. So if you want to relax, We'll have things like kava or functional mushrooms, CBD. We get all sorts of fun stuff. We do zero proof spirits. Uh, we have some ciders, bitters. I mean, we have and the have, wines, and you've got the non alcoholic wines. wines. Yeah, we have a lot of those. Oh, I can't forget that because you you got us in wine enthusiast magazine. So I can't forget. Oh that. yes, yeah. yes, that's right. I forgot about the article. Yes, that's so awesome. Okay, so yeah, is there a certain thing that most people are interested in when they first like? I know for me. When I first stopped drinking, because I was a wine drinker, so I wanted to find what are the good non-alcoholic wines. So is or is it just depend on who the customer is who's walking in? Somebody's maybe looking for wine, somebody's looking for ready to drink. Yeah, it kind of depends. And so our most popular SKU are our mix and match six packs. I love that you do that. We do two of them now. So we have the regular cardboard style, so you could fit any of the cans or bottles. And we also have a larger tote now. It's larger, so you could you can mix in the spirits, the wines and the mixers, and you get 10% off. So we encourage people to try a lot of things. So they can come in and make a six pack and try six different beers or three different beers, a couple wines, maybe a ready to drink mocktail. And they could try a single can of it. So they don't have to order it online. And you know, after shipping, maybe spend 30 or 40 bucks to try one thing. They could come in and get a single can, or they could come in on a Friday and get a free sample. We always do a free sample happy hour. Or on Saturday, we do non-alcoholic flights, different theme every week. So We may do red wines or bourbons. We got gins going this week. You get to try five, sometimes six different samples for like eight bucks. So it's just getting getting people to try out these products. It's amazing. We just did an event for the chamber the other day. And we were next to a regular, like a regular like beer and wine shop. And the line was wrapped around for them. Not a lot of people for us, right? Couple couple of irregulars, six, seven hundred people at this. So then we noticed, you know, people were they're walking right by us. We started asking people, hey, would you like a sample of this wine or this beer? Okay, yeah, they would come up. And almost everybody that tried a sample either loved it or purchased a product from us while they were waiting in line. So it's really just getting them to try it and asking them. I feel like 
I don't know why, but sometimes people feel that uncomfortable. They don't want to go into an alcoholic shop. We're just selling drinks, you know, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to buy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not going to bite. We're just selling drinks. Yeah. And there's so many good things to drink when you're not drinking. Yeah. There really are. Yeah. I mean, I think the functional beverage space is really where it's at. We get a lot of like the Purdue students, right? So they come in and they're like, I need energy and I need focus. So we're like, okay, well, we have a couple of drinks that will do both. And they'll get through uh, a paper or studying for an exam. Or somebody will come in, they're like, I've really had a hard day. My brain is just firing off. We need, I need something that's going to kind of reset it and kind of slow it down. So, like, okay, we have a drink for that too. So it's great being able to recommend something to somebody and not just going into a liquor store and just always just having that one option. It's really about flexibility and options and education on ways that we can promote brain health in certain directions. That's huge. That's huge. So did you know about like the functional, you know, drinks before you opened up Generation NA? Like, did you know about like ashwagandha and kava? Like, did you know about that? Or this is something you've learned since you started this? Not in the drink space, but I've been taking L-theanine, which is a green tea extract for about 10 to 12 years. So okay. um, I take a chewable form of that. And back when I was drinking, I had a lot of anxiety. I was on medication for a period of time and then I stopped the medication and L-theanine was able to uh, help me manage that. So in terms of the supplement form, yes. But in terms of the beverages, we uh, started carrying like recess drinks early on. So they have like the magnesium and the, I think, lemon balm and L-theanine, but we really didn't have a lot of it. And I think that that section of the category of the, of the non-alcoholic space has really grown a lot too. And like, I mean, we opened 18 months ago. So a lot of the products that we have now weren't, I don't even think they were around. We're Isn't like the crazy? dinosaurs in the Midwest here doing this. No, it's true. I mean, like there's so many products that are out that have just come out in this last year, just in this, just in 2023. It's insane. Like I used to have to hunt them down and beg people. And now we get contacted every day. Multiple times, hey, will you carry us? Will you carry us? We get we get boxes every day with our deliveries and their sample bottles. And we're not even requesting them. People are just sending us oh, all this stuff. My and that's gosh. great. We want to carry these and get customer feedback. I mean, unfortunately, we're at the point now we don't have a big shop. We can no longer carry everything, but I was we try to carry say, as much as we can. I think we have about 450 unique SKUs and it's not a huge shop. So like we, we, we have to be a little careful now, but we cycle out products. So if you come in, let's say you came in today as a customer, if you come back in two or three weeks, there's going to be a section of the store. It's like rotated totally out. Totally changed. Yeah. yeah like totally we, different. We sell yeah. through the stuff quickly. You know, on the weekends, like some of the drink categories, we'll sell like one per minute of like some of the categories of drinks. So like those things are going out the door. Like I have a pallet next to me of a certain drink because, you know, we can get our costs down and I know we'll sell through it. So we'll order like a hundred cases at a time. That's incredible. I mean, for a small, for a, a thousand square foot shop in main street, America, you know, okay. Um, dry January is coming or dry January is here. 2024 is here. or is just about to be here. I'm not sure exactly when this episode's coming out, but, um, what are you most excited about though for 2024? Yeah. So a couple of things, we have a dry January tasting series We've lined up seven brands from around the country. These are not just small brands. You're just like some of the biggest brands in the space that are coming here to do tastings at our little shop in Lafayette, Indiana. I love it, awesome. Rob. Congratulations. I mean, just really, can we just stop right there? Like, that's huge. Well, I was going to say, that's that's not what I'm most excited about, though. Dan. Okay. So, like, that was just like a, that was like a side note. What we're really excited about <laughs> is we're going to be coming up with our own Generation NA branded beverages. The first one I'm picking up on Sunday, I'm going to Chicago. And we have a new collaboration with Brella Drops. It's a mango Bellini. And it's a Generation NA collab product. We have a couple others in the works that are really excited. And we're going to be trying to come up with our own Generation NA branded products. So a lot of people ask me, are you going to you know, open a Generation NA in my, in my town? And, and, and that's not really my vision for, for, for my brand. I mean, I, I don't want to just have them. I want to have one really, really cool shop that people will come to. But then we want to get into other facets of the area. We have a lot of data. We have 18 months of consumer data on. If you put 400 drinks together, what do people like? What do people ask for? What's missing? Where are these holes? We have that data. We're going to start making our own beverages and filling in those holes and then getting them out, not just our bottle shop, but other bottle shops. Okay. Congratulations. Please put me on your list. Customer number one. I, I hope you're shipping. You have. Do I have to come to the shop to pick it up? So that's also good news because we get asked about every day if we ship. So we're not going to ship all products, but for our generation and a branded products, that's the plan along with merch. So if you, if it's our product, we're going to have it available for shipping. That is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Okay. 2024 is going to be so massive for you. 
okay, you're going to have to come on again to the podcast. Like at the end of the year, we have to do a recap of what has just happened because yeah. well, if we get nothing done, don't invite me. If I have to come back and say, we got none of that accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Yeah. That, that'll be me. Yes. <laughs> I, I had all these grand plans and now I have, <laughs> yeah, no, I well, would you'll love have, to. you'll have plenty of things to drink if it, <laughs> um, but I'm sure it's going to, I'm sure it's going to all work out just fine. I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. Okay, Rob, thank you so much for coming on Thriving Alcohol Free. I am just so thrilled for you and for the thousand plus days that you have, you know, under your belt of being alcohol free and for just what an encouragement you are to everybody who walks through those doors of your shop and who walks through the doors of your your Instagram account to get connected. So thank you for all the support you've been to me. I really, really appreciate it. So well, thank you so much, Deb. This podcast is amazing. I know you've helped a lot of people with your social media accounts and what you're doing. So it takes a lot of great people in the space to make it make it a thing, right? I mean, people want great drinks. They want to feel included. They don't want to feel stigmatized or marginalized or anything. So yeah, we, we want to make this thing uh, mainstream and it takes a lot of people to do that. Absolutely. It's so much fun. It's so much fun to be in the, the non-alcoholic space together. So, it is. Like, yes. I'm having a ton of fun. Like I get up and I love going to work and, and I Same. just genuinely am excited about coming to work. I'm like, man, it's Saturday. I'm not working today. What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> I love my family hanging out with it too, but I really do like love working. Yeah. Like, I could see doing this for a long time because it's one of the most rewarding things I've, I've done in my life. And then that, not just saying that because I worked in tech for 20 years and tech can be great, but it's also... You know, I mean, people don't always thank you. They they usually hear from them when like their stuff's broken. <laughs> so I was gonna say, yeah, yeah. The tech people, you, I, the only time I ever call a tech person is typically if there's a problem. Exactly. So, so it's the like the plum, like that. the plumber. You know, like the you don't call the plumber to say like thanks, great job. Yeah. The water's running. You know, you call when it's not running. Exactly. Yeah. So it's kind of nice to be on the other side. If people are excited to come in and and yeah. we can help them out, we can find a drink that can literally like change their life. It's not just a drink. It's an opportunity to make their life better. Every can that we sell here is a can that's not alcohol. And that's not a promo for Circle Back, although that's what I'm drinking. I love these guys. <laughs> <So>. uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but you're right. It's a it's a can that's not filled with alcohol that can, yeah. Can yeah, really every can, that. every can we sell is is hopefully an alcohol replacement. And you know, I mean we just want to change the narrative that we're we're just a fun drink shop. Like come in. You know, if you walk into a convenience store and you don't think twice about it, like come and check us out. We got a bunch of great drinks. Exactly. So make a trip, you guys, if you haven't, you know, made a trip to middle America, if you haven't gone to see Purdue's campus or you're taking your child to to visit colleges, make sure Purdue's on the list and stop at Generation NA and meet Rob and Lauren and everybody in his shop. They will take great, great care of you. So yeah, thank you, Rob. Thank you for your time. And thank you for being on the Mocktail Summit. I'm so happy for everybody to to get to hear more about your shop on there. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Deb. Appreciate it. Big time cheers to you for tuning in to the Thriving Alcohol-Free Podcast. I hope you will take something from today's episode and make one small change that will help you to thrive and have fun in life without alcohol. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social, send up a flare, or leave a rating and a review. I am cheering for you as you discover the world of non-alcoholic drinks and as you journey towards authentic freedom. See you in the next episode.